Welcome back to Pluralsight's Head in the Cloud, everyone. My name is Elias Kineser, and today we're going to answer the question, how do we document our cloud strategy? How do we construct the document? Today, I'm going to walk you through how to do exactly that. Let's get started. All right, so what are we gonna cover? How are we gonna construct the document? What are the different sections that we're gonna put in this document? Well, first, we're gonna start off with the executive summary. We're then going to document the business drivers. We're going to talk about the cloud adoption approach. We're then going to talk about risks and exit strategy. We're gonna talk about success metrics. And then finally, we're going to talk about terminology. Let's start with the executive summary. This is the section that your executives are going to read. After all, it is the executive summary. There's no reason why the executive summary can't be one or two paragraphs, just not more than that. In this summary, what we wanna do here is we wanna talk about the vision, we wanna talk about why this project is important to the business. We wanna always focus that this particular real estate in the document is geared towards executive. If they don't read anything, they should be able to read this and walk away with an idea of why our organization is doing cloud. The second section in the document is going to be business drivers. Now, in the last episode, episode, we talked a lot about business drivers. What I want you to do here is after you've had these conversations with your executive sponsor and potentially others, we want to document the business drivers. If you find yourself documenting business drivers, again, like scalability and agility, elasticity, etc., make sure you take a step back and remember what I'm saying here. These are important, but these aren't business drivers. What we want to document are things like, is our organization going to leverage sensor-based data? Is that the story that the executive sponsor told you? Are we potentially interested in data ingestion and correlation in real time? I've been working with a customer recently, it's an insurance company that is in the business of acquiring smaller companies. So they are constantly making acquisitions. They'll do 20, 30 acquisitions, 40 acquisitions a year. They need a way to get faster to market and these companies are nationwide. They are all over the place. If you're sitting with an executive sponsor and they're telling you the story of, hey, you know, we're gonna continue to make these acquisitions, we're gonna continue to consolidate the market as much as possible, but we're ending up with all of these small offices uh, around the nation, and these offices are always going to have smaller server rooms, smaller data centers. You're definitely not gonna wanna, for example, maintain all of these server rooms, so what do you do? Now you bring in potentially the cloud to resolve a situation. This now turns into an effective business driver that you can add into the document and then you can explain. After we document the business drivers, the next section, which is the cloud adoption approach, becomes a little easier. Depending on the business driver, we now have a decision to make. Are we going to adopt a strategy of cloud first, or are we going to adopt a strategy of cloud opportunistic? Cloud first means that anytime we wanna add a new application to the organization, cloud gets priority, which means if you don't want to deploy it in cloud, justify why this particular application needs to go on premises, needs to go to a managed services provider, needs to go into a colo, it's cloud first by default and justification if it needs to be deployed anywhere else. Cloud opportunistic just means that we're going to assess the application as it comes in on an application by application basis and decide if the best place for it is the cloud, then we're going to deploy it in the cloud. If it's the data center, then we're going to deploy it in the data center. Now, what I will tell you and my advice to you is you're going to do multi-cloud at some at some point in time. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Now, you can either do multi-cloud by design, you know, you're going to strategically plan for it, or multi-cloud is going to force itself on you, either by acquisition, um, maybe shadow IT, a different group in the organization is using a different cloud provider. It's going to happen, so my advice is to prepare for multi-cloud regardless of whether or not you chose cloud first or cloud opportunistic. All right, next up is risks and exit strategy. Now make sure when we're talking about risk, you are putting or you're highlighting the risks that are going to be important to executives. Now there are IT related stuff that executives are going to be interested in that rise to their level. For example, one of the first questions that your executives are gonna be interested in learning about is our cloud secure. Now if you ask me, clouds are more secure than what we have on premises. The challenge is, the question is, are we securing these clouds properly. The other question to answer that might come up uh, with executives is what if these cloud providers fail? So again, here we have to put things in perspective. We can't just say, well, what if Amazon fails? Or what if Microsoft fails? Or what if Google fails? If they fail as in go out of business, there's something going on in the world. So we always have to put risk 
within context and we have to limit what we're talking about from a risk perspective. Executives might be interested in uh, clouds are going to create significant lock-in. That is a fair question and you should address that. Lock-in always comes down to how much time do I have to get out of a lock-in, it's operationally challenging and it's costly, but we can always get out of a lock-in. Now, the other thing that your executives might be interested in is, hey, what if clouds shut us down? Now, this becomes a little political, but I don't think you should shy away from the question. It's a possibility, but they're not in the business of kicking out customers. So putting this in context becomes really important. The other thing to talk about with executives that might be of interest to them or might only be of interest to you is cost, right? So you can bring up the, the idea of cost. If you're able to tie your cloud project back to the business, cost is going to be a non-issue. And then I've seen a lot of customers that will come up and say, I would have to re-architect all of my applications. Well, if I were an executive, my answer is, that's what I'm paying you for. That's your problem. These are things that you have to talk amongst yourselves, amongst IT on how do we do this efficiently and without having to put in a lot of time, but the executives won't care about that too much. They are investing in a business driver. They are trying to arrive at a goal. Having an exit strategy is also crucial for anything, right? First of all, how much time do you have to exit? Timing is the number one thing that we want to identify when we're looking at an exit strategy. The number two thing we have to decide is what are we going to exit? Are we going to exit the entire cloud provider or are we going to have maybe our most important applications, our tier one applications, and we're going to design an exit strategy around these applications specifically. And the third thing that we have to put in here is who makes the decision. It should never be one person or one team, it should be a collection of people, a virtual team made up of your legal, of your procurement, of IT, of the line of business applications owners, etc. So who are the members of this team and what is the criteria that they're going to assess to determine whether or not they're going to exit the application or exit the entire cloud provider. If you're interested in learning more about an exit strategy, I've uh, created a video entirely dedicated on how to design your exit strategy document. We're going to link it somewhere up here. Moving on to success metrics. Oftentimes I've seen success metrics in cloud strategy documents that will say something like improved application release frequency. Okay, well good for you, that's an IT thing, right? Again, my audience, my constituents in this document are business folks, executives. Move towards business success metrics. Now, you can put something like, for example, the number of advice that was generated from the integration of data streams. That is a measurable metric, and that is something that your executives will be super interested in. Another type of metric that you can put in is improved efficiency by integrating different systems. Maybe you can put improved efficiency by 10% by integrating systems. What does integrating systems mean? I'll give you a personal example. My dad owns a restaurant, and today he's got delivery services from DoorDash, from Grubhub, from Uber Eats but each of them is its own system. They are not integrated. So when an order gets print out, they have to run through and give it to the kitchen, to the dispatchers, etc. As opposed to if I were to integrate all of them, they would go through the point of sale system. They would print out in the kitchen, the kitchen, the dispatchers, the waiters, etc. They wouldn't know that this is for Grubhub or Uber Eats or anything like that. And as a result, no tickets are lost because nobody has to run around and give different tickets to, to the different sections. These are things that we can measure. Another thing that you can add as a success metric, especially if you're in an industry that is constantly doing mergers and acquisitions, are you able to reduce the onboarding time by 20%? Reduce it maybe from 30 days, maybe to 15 days. That is a measurable success metric that the business will be super interested in. And finally, the last section of the cloud strategy document should be an appendix, and it should be around terminology. First, because it gets us all on the same page, whether it's the business or even IT. So for example, define public cloud, define IaaS, infrastructure as a service, and platform as a service, and software as a service. What do they mean? Give a definition so that if your executives are interested in learning more, great, but if your IT folks want to also make sure that they're on the same page as far as these terminologies are concerned, you have an area where you've defined them. All right, so in the end, what did we cover in this episode? We talked about how do we document the cloud strategy document and the different sections that should live in it. The executive summary, the business drivers, the cloud adoption approach, the risks and exit strategy, the success metrics, 
and the terminology. If this is the type of content that you're interested in, make sure you like, you subscribe, leave a comment, hit the notification bell so that you're alerted the next time we upload a video. Also, don't forget to check out Pluralsight's library of IT courses. This will be especially helpful for you or for a member of your organization, especially if your company is going through an upskilling project. Pluralsight has a ton of videos on cloud strategy, on cloud implementation, on cloud provider certification, and more. Thank you so much for watching to the end. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one.